In 71 BC, the Third Servile War reached its decisive moment. Spartacus, who had led the slave rebellion against Rome, had inflicted several defeats on Roman forces, including those at Mount Vesuvius and Picenum. To counter the growing threat, Rome appointed Marcus Licinius Crassus, a wealthy and ambitious aristocrat, to take charge of the campaign. Known for his vast fortune and extensive slave ownership, Crassus had a personal interest in quelling the revolt, as many of the rebelling slaves came from estates like his own. Crassus raised six legions from his own resources and was entrusted with what remained of the defeated Roman consular armies. He was determined to avoid the mistakes of previous commanders and placed strong emphasis on organization and discipline. He assigned two legions to a subordinate named Mummius, instructing him to avoid direct confrontation with the rebels. However, Mummius disobeyed and engaged Spartacus's forces, only to be defeated in a carefully laid ambush. Furious at this failure, Crassus took drastic measures to restore order within his ranks. He revived the ancient punishment of decimation, where every tenth soldier in a selected cohort was executed by their comrades. The brutal display succeeded in restoring discipline and fear among his troops, making them more resolute in the battles to come. Crassus then began to press Spartacus, winning several engagements and forcing the rebel army south to Brutium. The Romans built fortifications along the northern boundary of Spartacus's position, effectively trapping him and his forces. With no means of escape, Spartacus devised a plan to cross the narrow strait to Sicily, where he hoped to rally more slaves to his cause and strengthen his army. He reached out to the Cilician pirates, seeking their assistance in transporting his forces. However, after striking a deal, the pirates failed to deliver, leaving Spartacus stranded. It remains uncertain whether they were bribed by Crassus or simply deceived the rebel leader from the start. In the winter of 71 BC, as a final act of desperation, Spartacus tried to negotiate with Crassus, who remained relentless. Eventually, Spartacus saw no other option but to fight the Romans on disadvantageous terms. Against the odds, the rebels managed to break through the Roman lines, allowing them to escape north. However, this victory came at a great cost. Many men died in the engagement, and over 10,000 others, including Gannicus and Castus, were cut down by the Romans. Spartacus made a last-ditch effort to reach his Alpine goal, and escaped the Roman Republic. But his hopes were crushed long before reaching this goal as he found himself trapped between three Roman armies. Aside from Crassus's legions in full pursuit, Pompey, arguably Rome's most esteemed general, was marching through southern Italy with his veteran legionnaires returning from Iberia. Additionally, the Senate had recalled another general, Marcus Terentius Varro Lucullus, the proconsul of Macedonia, who was stationed in Brundisium with four legions of his own. Realizing that he and his followers would soon be dead, Spartacus resolved to fight to the death, following the example of his fallen comrade, Crixus. They turned to face Crassus in one final battle, determined to go down fighting and to inflict as much damage as possible on the enemy. Both armies were roughly evenly matched, Spartacus commanding 50,000 remaining fighters and Crassus fielding 40,000, including a few thousand cavalry. Before the battle began, Spartacus dramatically killed his own horse, proclaiming that if he won the day, he would have plenty of other horses to choose from, and if he lost, he would not need one. His point was clear, retreat was not an option. Spartacus would fight to the death. the gladiators charged at the Roman ranks, colliding with a wall of shields and swords.
The battle was long and bloody, with neither side able to make decisive headway. Spartacus rallied his troops and led an advance against Crassus, desperately trying to reach him. He cut down two centurions who tried to block his way, despite receiving numerous wounds. In the midst of the battle, Spartacus was severely wounded in the leg by a javelin, forcing him to get down on his knees. Despite his injury, the rebel leader refused to give up and continued fighting before he was finally overpowered and killed by Crassus's bodyguard. His death sent shockwaves throughout his army, and with their leader slain, they broke. The initial fighting had been brutal, but the battlefield now became a slaughter. By the end, 36,000 former slaves lay dead compared to just 1,000 Romans. The remnants of Spartacus's army fled to the mountains, but Crassus's men quickly pursued them, capturing 6,000, all of whom he crucified along the Appian Way from Rome to Capua. Another 5,000 were taken by Pompey's forces coming from the north, all of whom were killed finally putting an end to the Third Servile War. The war ended with a victory for Rome, but not a victory for Crassus. He had invested so much of his personal resources, hoping to reap all the political benefits that came from putting down the rebellion to advance his political career. He was given credit for defeating Spartacus, but at the end of the day, he felt humiliated as he had to share his glory with Pompey, his political rival, who was given credit for putting an end to the rebellion, despite only fighting the last pockets of resistance after Crassus's decisive victory. Rome would never again see a slave revolt of this scale, and Spartacus would become an inspiration for others fighting for their freedom throughout history. The Third Servile War is also crucial to the history of the Roman Republic. Pompey claimed that as he had captured the last remnants of Spartacus's army, he had put the final stop to the rebellion, seizing part of Crassus's glory. Both generals now enjoyed popularity with the people for defeating what was considered the greatest threat to Rome itself since Hannibal. As a result, in the next year, 70 BC, both men were elected consul. Crassus would never forgive Pompey for claiming part of his glory, but eventually, alongside Julius Caesar, they would form the first triumvirate further accelerating the downfall of the Roman Republic and the rise of the Roman Empire. On this channel, we are putting together narrative historical cinematic battles. Make sure to subscribe and thank you for watching. See you on the next one.